Hi there, and welcome to our Gatsby Comp Talk, building a modern front end with a legacy back end. My name is Tom Hughes, and I'm a front end developer from Liverpool in the UK. My colleague John Thornton is also going to be joining me on this talk today. We're both the co founders and developers at Attach Digital. Attach is a headless commerce agency that specializes in all things Jamstack with Gatsby. We build fast and scalable websites for modern growing brands. We've combined agency and in house experience to give the best of both worlds to our clients and have grown organically thanks to good relationships and referrals. Since early 2019, we've worked with Gatsby as our core technology, allowing us to make the most out of the latest technologies for our clients. We also run two meetups for the growing Gatsby community, Gatsby JS Liverpool and Gatsby JS London. And we're currently organizing meetups in both Liverpool and London for the spring. So if you're based in the UK, do keep an eye out and join the groups on meetup.com for updates. Over the last year or so, we've worked on a number of different projects involving legacy technology in some shape or form. And today we will talk about how we went about building a modern front end with a legacy back end. Here's John to explain more. Thanks, Tom. As Tom mentioned, today we're talking about legacy software. So we thought we'd start with a definition. Legacy means denoting or related to software or hardware that has been superseded, but it's difficult to, re to replace because of its wide use. A couple of key bits to talk about here are superseded and difficult to replace. In an ideal world, superseded technology would be replaced. However, sometimes that's just not possible for many different reasons. So why not just replace it? These reasons, like many other things in life, always come down to either time, money, or both. We have a few examples here. On the time side, we have data migration, for example. In a legacy backend, there could be years of data which needs reformatting for an import to another system. Similar functionality. This could have evolved over years and require massive amounts of time to rebuild somewhere else and have potential knock-on effects for other systems connected to the infrastructure. On money, we have issues like potential downtime, cases where companies might have lengthy contracts with current providers connected to their legacy site. So let's have a look at a recent project we worked on with a legacy backend, which is due to go live soon, a headless commerce site for spa seekers. Spa seekers are the UK's longest standing spa booking agency, having celebrated their 30th birthday in 2019. Spa seekers current site, an ASP.net monolith, was first built over eight years ago, and the backend not only powers the website, but their CRM, booking engine, emails and more. In addition to what the, what the backend did when it was originally built, over the years, more and more functionality has been added. So rebuilding this as part of the new project in one, in one go was simply not possible. For Spar Seekers, with their current setup, they faced a few issues they wanted to solve. With the rollout of Core Web Vitals, Spar Seekers wanted a faster front end that would not only help boost their scores, but also make their site easier to navigate for users. As a team of predominantly back-end developers, Sparseekers lacked front-end capacity and capabilities. And finally, due to their current monolithic setup, even a small front-end change would take a full deployment of the whole stack. So, so deployments would be less frequent because of time they would take and potential risks involved in doing that. Sparseekers decided that they want to go more towards a microservice architecture, starting with a headless site and new APIs to support that site and eventually splitting up the legacy backend into discrete deployable units to cater for different operations. Decoupling allowed for the front end to be built on a modern framework, obviously we chose Gatsby, to help the spa seekers achieve in faster page loads, better lighthouse scores and lower bounce rates. Splitting the front end from the back end also allowed us and the back end developers to work alongside each other more easily as we weren't getting each other's way. We could start on the front end while the GraphQL content API was being built. And then once portions of that were ready, we were able to integrate them into the front end. The first stage of the build was to collaborate with the Spar Seekers team so they could get the necessary APIs for us to use. 
the main two being GraphQL Content API and the Checkout API. We'll start here with the GraphQL API. This was a large scale build that was phased into different sections of the site content, like spa page listings, individual spars, page content, and the blog. Along with some reformatting the CMS, as the CMS wasn't quite intended to serve data this way. Being a phased approach allows both teams to align quickly on format and structure and speed up time in revisions later on. This was also slid into a live and staging environment. And the beauty of the site being headless meant, as we mentioned before, we could start on the front end using static test data, being able to replace this quickly with real data once each phase was ready to roll out from the API. As we weren't using a third party e-commerce platform like Shopify, the backend developers also had to build out a checkout API for us to interact with. This included functionality such as add to cart, postcode lookup, and booking generation. This legacy functionality has been built up for years and had many improvements bespoke to the Spark Seekers journey, which would have taken ages to rebuild and might not have even been possible with third party integrations. We ended up building a lightweight reusable context structure to use throughout the site with a single Gatsby function to make the calls to the API, keeping this secure and scalable through Gatsby Cloud. With these new APIs, especially the content API, we are able to provide data to the, to the decoupled front end. With this, we had to find the best way to consume data. Back to Tom to explain more. Thanks, John. Since we're using a custom legacy CMS, no specific source plugin exists. But since we're working with GraphQL, we could make use of Gatsby's Gatsby source GraphQL plugin. This official source plugin is versatile and allows you to connect any GraphQL API to Gatsby's GraphQL data layer. All we had to do was configure the source plugin in the Gatsby config file with a type name, field name, and the URL to query from. Unfortunately, with this plugin being so versatile, and not for one specific use case, there's no support for incremental builds, cloud builds, or preview. But we'll circle back around to that later. Since we weren't gonna benefit from partial builds and each of the builds would be a full build, we knew that build times might be a challenge. So we looked into different ways that we could solve this. At the start of the project, Image optimization was discussed heavily, not only for the new site, but also for the current site. And as a byproduct of choosing an external image CDN, we improved build times as Gatsby no longer needed to process and optimize all the images at build time. We wanted a solution that worked for the current site, but also had good ties with Gatsby, so ImageX was a great choice. Plus, ImageX is actually used by a number of headless CMSs, such as Data CMS, Prismic, and Cosmic JS. So we were pretty used to their API and the functionality that ImageX provided. The integration between Gatsby and ImageX provides a few different ways to utilize ImageX's image API. So it's a good fit for most use cases. In our use case, we knew that the images, image URLs were going to come through GraphQL. So we made use of ImageX's Gatsby plugin image component. We created a UI component in order to set up a fallback image, as well as adding a couple of default parameters to send through to ImageX. Then in our component, in this case, our contained image component, we made use of our image UI component and pass through the image URL and title, as well as the width and height and the type of layout. While there are some things that you, can, that you can't do with Gatsby Source GraphQL, there are some opportunities to increase performance, reduce build times. In the docs for Gatsby Source GraphQL, there's some information about performance tuning with batching and this ended up proving very useful for us. An environment variable exists to increase the number of parallel queries and plugin options exist uh, to fine tune batching. 
While each use case is different and the appropriate values are dictated by the GraphQL endpoint limits, it's certainly worth experimenting with these settings, as we were able to shave about 60% off our build times. Gatsby v4 was released partway through development, so we decided to leave the upgrade until the end of development, or potentially even until after the site was live. However, the need for v4, specifically deferred static generation, came when around 200,000 extra pages were added to the build. These were mainly low traffic pages, most no traffic, that existed on the current site mainly just because they could. These pages were for package categories on the site and were effectively different combinations of package categories, locations and state types. And these were currently being server-side rendered on the existing site. And while with v4, we could have also used server-side rendering for these pages, since the data was going to be the same for every user, DSG made more sense and gave us the best of both worlds, with reduced build times and pages that were still fast for the first user, but then SSG fast for others. So DSG allows us to defer building certain pages, often secondary or low traffic pages, until the first time a user requests it. And you can do this by adding defer true to your create page call in the Gatsby node file, or you can actually do this through the file system root API. The actual Boolean value you pass to defer can be based on your own logic from basing it on the number of pages being generated or even on analytics tracking. In our case, we're using it, we're using DSG for package categories and passing true when they're not primary categories. We're also using it for blog articles when the publish date is before the cutoff date, which in this case is six months in the past. And since most of the 200,000 extra pages were secondary package categories, DSG actually got us back to similar build times to before the extra pages were added, just showing how useful this new rendering option is. Alongside working on Gatsby-related techniques to improve build times, the back-end developers at Sparseekers were also working hard behind the scenes, making incremental improvements to the legacy back-end. An incremental migration to the cloud infrastructure with Azure allowed for scaling during builds, increasing the speed at which the database could be queried. Now, often as developers, we find ourselves looking for technical answers to questions and, well, we probably overcomplicate things at times. And while Gatsby's different rendering options allow us to build out sites with hundreds and thousands of pages, one question we asked ourselves while implementing DSG was if all these pages were actually needed. And Sparseeker's SEO agency carried out some research looking at these extra pages in terms of traffic and links and found that most pages were in fact not needed. This gave us extra options in our decision making. So looking ahead, we've been able to use some techniques to reduce build times. However, to make the most out of Gatsby Cloud, we'd ideally want to use incremental builds, cloud builds, and preview. To do this, we could look at building our own custom source plugin, something that will soon be getting easier with some new source plugin tooling on its way, so keep an eye out for that from the Gatsby team. Or we could potentially make use of many modern headless CMSs that are out there, in part or in full. The great thing about Gatsby is that we could choose to utilize a different data source set for, say, the blog, and give content editors an improved experience without actually having to change much on the site. So to sum up, there's good news. It's definitely possible to use a legacy backend with Gatsby. It may seem daunting, but with a solid plan, this is doable. With the Gatsby source GraphQL plugin, you do have to be mindful of build times, but as we've seen with what Tom's talked about, there are techniques to reduce this. And lastly, you can make incremental changes and you can improve things in the future. You can even go one step further with incrementally rolling out the front end. For, for example, starting with the blog. Thanks for listening. 
We appreciate your time. Please do stick around for the Q&A where I'll be joined by Tom. Don't miss the live Q&A coming up now. All right, welcome back everybody. Hope you enjoyed that talk coming from Attach Digital and that's Tom Hughes and John Thornton. And they're here with me today uh, to do a quick five minute Q&A. But before we get started, uh, can someone do me a favor in the chat right now? Can you check the Liverpool FC score for us? John skipped the game tonight in order to be here with us. I'm personally honored. Um, John, thank you so much. Yeah, no worries. But seriously, can someone <laughs> drop the score for him because it started just like 10 minutes ago or something? So yeah. And, and again, we'll, we'll keep this short for you, John. We'll keep this short. No worries. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> no worries. Uh, yeah. So tell me more about um, Spa Seekers. When is it going live? First of all, is it live? When is it going live? What's happening? Yeah, not live just about yet. Um, hopefully very soon in the next few weeks, we're going to start sort of um, yeah rolling it out for some sort of testing for a subset of users. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the, the beauty of obviously headless and being able to use APIs is we can sort of have the two sites running um, sort of side by side and and the old site and, and, and the new site, obviously the content's going to be coming from the same place. Uh, the mm -hmm. spars that are listed are going to be coming from the same place and all the orders will be able to go through to the same place as well. So um, yeah, it's really the beauty of the architecture that sort of allows us to roll out in that way. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, John. Yeah, no, I was going to say it's a, it's a really good way of doing it. Uh, I think, and obviously, yeah, the plan is to do it to sort of subset of users. So it's it's really exciting to do that. And uh, the other side of it as well is it can we're, we're going to route the whole site um, to those subset, but you can also do it different ways as well, like rolling up just the blog or however you might want to do it uh, for your own project. So. Uh, on a different project, we're doing it on a on a CDM reverse proxy, which um, allows us to do the same sort of thing, but um, just on certain areas of a site. So really good for like testing and, and making sure it's working well for users, um, just as well as doing a whole site as well. Yeah, 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 no, it makes perfect sense. Like why change everything at once and then potentially have to deal with, you know, giant problems with everything instead of just one. I'm curious, is there a particular, and I think you can answer this, like part of the website, like is there something you're focusing on first? Like what's your approach? do it in the, in terms of that yeah well i think well because because we're going like with the whole site at once um we're trying to do the whole lot but try and do it for one set of of uh, certain users first before rolling out the whole thing gotcha. so it's a, it's a it's a it's a large site uh with a lot of of, of different moving parts and make sure yeah obviously spars is displaying well and uh, everything's working yeah. properly throughout the checkout and stuff so um yeah it's exciting to do like the whole site but just a small amount of users first and then roll that out gradually uh, as we get things you know tested and working um, as right. best as possible yeah nice yeah fast as possible that's the motto yeah, <laughs> yeah. <That's> um, okay. <laughs> i know that we are coming up on time but uh another question for you if if you were to do this kind of project again with a legacy cms is there something that you might do differently like did you learn anything from this that you would want to do a different way yeah, I think so. I think like one of the things we might do is look into more of the legacy side and see like, is it viable to move anything outside of, of that, even just in small chunks? Um, the, the, the thing with it, with building a new site is you get a lot of opportunity. Uh, and it, it is always great when you're doing that to sort of look at like, well, you know, all these great uh, CMSs and, and APIs that build already brilliantly into Gatsby. Um, see if it's possible to move some of that stuff over sometimes it's not um and and that's the best thing to do is keep it where it is and, and not migrate it for, for speed and efficiency but it is like a really good chance to look at that stuff uh even if it's just like yeah for a small part like the blog or something um definitely have a look at those things that work really well uh if, if for plugins with gatsby uh out the box rather than building your own stuff but uh yeah either way as you found out it's good <laughs> so yeah uh, positive yeah and tom anything you want to add on or did john cover most of it or uh, just probably that we do take Gatsby for granted. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> to cut you off there. Well, no, I'm glad it, it makes things easier for you. So, yeah. And and we see you around a lot. So um, where where should people go look for your next Gatsby project? Um, yeah, there. just go through attachdigital.co.uk and, and catch us on Twitter, attachdigital. Um, it's probably the best place to check us out. 
Nice. All right. Well, thank you both for coming on today for this quick Q and A. John, get back to your game quickly. Thanks. <laughs> uh, and we have uh, the next couple of talks coming up. Mark Shopshire of uh, Gatsby Partner Agency Media Current with Gatsby and Drupal at scale, Higher Ed News, and also at the same time, sustainably maintaining the Gatsby plugin ecosystem with Alex Moon of WP Engine. So, see you in one of those. Bye. <laughs>